Everybody, it's Tyler here at Ontario Provincials checking in with my Dark Horse pick for this division, Alt F4. This team is absolutely phenomenal, 7558. So much we're going to be breaking down in this robot. Sword drive with a turret. There's a lot more that goes into it. It's a really cool intaking system. We'll be taking a look at as well. How they divert between their shooter and also their amp mechanism is really cool. So keep an eye out for that. And all our great things as well, too, just how they're doing their localization and how this team is performing so well here. I'm so happy to see. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Trevor, let's break down uh, some of the strategy behind this robot. Talk to me about the orientation of what you have, and then we'll be uh, breaking down this awesome turret and a couple other things too. Right, so I want to begin with how the robot is set up. So here we can see we have the intake in the front and the turn in the rear. So this is actually for auto optimization in which with the turn in the rear, we can always pick up notes from the front and we can shoot from almost any place within our wing. And this allows us to be really fast in auto, really fast to shoot and also gives us an incredible position to fire off any notes into the speaker. Um, I'd also like to talk about how our turn works. So we're one of the only bots here with a turn. Now, the reason for that is um, instead of having to turn our swerve drive, we can actually just turn our turret. So for example, in the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the match, we can just preload a note and it'll go right into the speaker without ha us having to turn, which saves us a lot of time. So looking uh, at the turret wise, was there any big uh, complexities or any sacrifices your team had to make while designing a turret for your robot? All uh, right, the first thing was weight. Um, the turn adds a lot of weight and um, it all adds a lot of complexity with another motor and it also adds another uh, thing to break. So it's very hard to design something that is easy to make, easy to use and ensuring it is reliable. Um, so that was one of their main um, challenges with the turret design. Let's uh, move on and bring on Kai next to talk more about uh, a couple other great things. Let's run through that note journey, starting with the uh, intake and we'll go into your, uh, your shooter as well and give a couple demos on how it works. Of course, yeah. So. Uh, with our bot, our intake is the first thing that where the note comes from. The note comes in through here, through our rollers at the, at the bottom here, and then the note comes up through our intake, and it either goes out into our shooter, so that we have a deciding roller right here. Either it spins this way into our feeder rollers for our shooter, or it keeps continuing up along into our elevator, which is our amp scoring device. So can we? Yeah. So so we can show the flow of the note with the intake right here. And then when we score, we raise the elevator up, no spits out, and that's how we score amp. Um, can we show feeding? So what I was talking about there with the deciding roller over here. So when it spins the other way, it goes right into our shooter over here. And our shooter has two feeder rollers in the back over here. These two feeder rollers hold the node in place before we shoot and make sure that we don't have any uh, overshooting because we have beam brakes over here, two beam brakes that Make sure we don't overfeed, because when we overfeed, of course, we would shoot out too early. And that's how we solve that problem. And then with our shooter here, uh, this is something that's very different from other teams, I would say. We have different size wheels. Our flywheels, this is a three and a half inch, this is a three inch wheel. And what that does is it generates uh, spin on our note. So our shot is very, very flat and very accurate. And we shoot the same spot every time. And that's just, that was something we did with our shooter to make our shot very consistent. Something Which I want to ask important. you is you have a lot of uh, uh, note travel through your robot as it goes oh, through, yeah. right? When I look at uh, some other teams, uh, a lot of intake rollers, things like that. Um, did you have any complications with either jamming or centering or anything like that that you had to worry about? Yeah, so we had a few issues here with our, if you check out the amp over here. So these, this is a new addition, these three uh, belts over here. So the note used to come up and then like over here, the note has to bend so much to come up and through that, sorry. Um, so we added these belts so that there's more contact with the note so that we can, so we have more points of contact, which is better manipulation for the note so we can just shoot it out at that awkward angle there. And uh, we 
learn from past years that we want to have as much control over the, the flow of the game piece as possible. So we have, that's why we have all these rollers and we have sensors, we have beam brakes, we have an, another beam brake right over here. So we can pretty much automate the entire flow of the note throughout our bot. One of the things I want to compliment you on when that amp came out, can we see that come up one more time? On yeah. there, uh, there is, I mean, your robot is just so rock solid as it goes through. So watching your scoring cycles as you go through, your robot really doesn't have to slow down or anything like that in order to score in the amp. Was that something that was a big consideration, like factoring your CG and just like really smooth cycles all the way through? So there's a, team, a 1690 orbit um, in Israel and they proved the concept that you can shoot into the amp. So we looked at that and we're like, oh, hey, why don't we try that? Because they're a really good team and we wanted to try that. So for our first two competitions, we didn't actually use this amp mechanism. We shot, so these two rollers weren't here and we just shot straight up out of here and then into our amp. But uh, we found that this is way more reliable because if you can get up and over the amp and it's the notes already in the trajectory downwards, you just shoot it in and then that's just so much easier. So, so you have seen an improvement here at Provincials uh, having that redesign? Oh yeah, our amp is probably the most, the most consistent part of our bot. We don't miss amp very much or at all really. So that's something that's a good, a very good addition for this competition. Cam, okay, let's talk about some of the programming on this robot here. There's so much that goes through in regards to uh, even some uh, autonomously uh, driven teleop modes and stuff and how all that automation works as well too. So break down to what you're doing. And then uh, I love, by the way, your uh, driver station is pretty awesome. So yeah. let's break down how that works. All right, so one of our goals this year was to automate pretty much everything. So our driver can just drive and our operator can just hit buttons. So pretty much only one button's required to do practically anything on the bot. So with our LED panel combined with that, we can have feedback to the driver while he, and he doesn't have to take his eyes off of it. So let's see it, let's see it in action, Kai. Yeah. So when the red light turns green, that means it's ready to shoot. Out, turn the turret, turn the cart. So the turret actually tracks it. So it makes it so we don't actually have to worry about aiming and changing presets. It's based on the gyro. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we have that tracking with the gyro for the turret combined with our limelight. So we have a bunch of presets here, right here. So these are just like given locations, like front post, that would be the post right on the stage in front of the speaker. So we hit that, it gives the turret and the pivot a best guess of where it is. And then the limelight, once it sees it, it takes over and tracks the fine adjustments. So that's how we did that. We didn't have to do any full field tracking because we had issues with it because the field wasn't set up properly, all that stuff. So yeah. Looking at, uh, you know, from uh, future iterations, was there anything from Provincials you made a big change for? And then should you qualify for World Championships, any big changes you'd be looking at making? Yeah, so one of our main things was the amp. We had to make it really consistent. We added an LED here when it's ready to score the amp. So when we go up and it's ready to score, it turns green and then it shoots. So that's one of our big things so the driver knows when it's actually time to shoot. If we go to Worlds, we, we'll add more cameras here so that in auto, when we get hit, we can localize and still know where we are. It makes it so we can perform better. All right. Overall, great setup for that. Lastly, I want to bring in uh, Jacob to talk about uh, looking at the season, how you approached uh, Crescendo, uh, especially from a prototyping standpoint as well too. Just walk me through uh, how your team uh, was able to come up with such an awesome design. All right, so obviously first thing, what shape is our robot going to be? So our drivetrain is a 24 by 24 perfect square. And the reason we made it kind of small, like we're not pushing the limits really. We extended our intake kind of outside of the frame. This way we could intake without without getting any anything in the way of the interior of the robot. If you take a look down here, we kind of have this, we have this like second level and all our electricals in there. We, we protected everything on the inside of the robot and we, yeah, so every so the main thing is we tried to this the outside part protects everything of the robot and so you know if we take when we take a beating in the matches and stuff like that we want to be able to keep inside our our pit crew our main goal is to just keep the robot good we're going to leave it to the drivers so if our on our last year robot we kind of like everything electrical stuff like that was on the outside of the robot so we kind of like tried to protect protect it all this year all right, and so some of the little things of our robot that we kind of prototyped along the way. So we have this our our latch system in, in on the shooter. We just lift it up, simple. 
So it gives you easy access to uh, what you need uh, underneath. Yeah, really easy, simple way to keep it protected and also easily accessible. All our electricals down there in our battery as well. Some other like tiny things we do, we have these little 3D prints on the intake. We got these little triangles down here and we got some like hockey puck type circle type things here. So when the note comes in, it's gotta be perfectly centered for the amp. So our turret runs on this giant metal gear down here. Yeah, it's a completely custom gear that we, we, we this is our first combo using it. So if the motor right here, we've got a gear on the inside. So really save space, wires are all out of the way. Motor spins, turret spins on the inside, really easy. Makes it easier for us to just, makes, get, makes it easy for us to shoot it and the thing. All right, well, Alta 4, congratulations on a phenomenal machine and robot. This is a team that uh, is special. I know in Canada is pretty well known, but if you're outside the area, you really got to be looking at this team even more. And hopefully you qualify for World Championships because this is going to be a team to look out for. So good luck here at Provincials. And thanks for uh, taking the time to show us more about your machine. Good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.